following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Welcome to the Morgan Man Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Stacy Cole Morgan. Here on the Morgan Man Sports Podcast, we talk Atlanta Falcons news, pre-game predictions, and all other news surrounding the Atlanta Falcons. Touchdown, Atlanta! Also on the podcast, we talk Call of Duty League esports covering roster mania, major predictions, COD champs, player trades, and much more to get you ready for every single CDL weekend. Scuff goes through, and Scuff says, with the one-on-one, and Optic with the reverse sweep. If that sounds good with you, put on your Falcons jersey, grab your gaming headset, and let's get the show started. I'm your host, Stacey Go Morgan, and you are listening to the Morgan Man Sports Podcast here on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Good Heart HQ, or wherever you find your preferred podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are taking a little bit of a different turn from recapping all the CDL teams from this past season, and we got a very special guest on today's episode of the Morgan Man Sports Podcast. He works for GG Breaking Point, and he is one of the top contributors to breaking news and much more for them. And he's a day one Carolina Royal Ravens fan, Drew <laughs> Picascaro. <Picosco. laughs> Dang, I practice that. Yeah, Piscaro. No, you're good. But yeah, man, what is uh, what's going on? Yeah, you know, not much. Just uh, as you saw from my uh, bio, there, I am a day one Royal Ravens fan. Now that they have relocated to uh, North Carolina. Uh, that, that was probably the most exciting news from this off season for the CDL. Uh, other than that, I mean, whole day of watching the NFL and, uh, you know, just looking forward to this off season coming to an end and, uh, getting the MW3 CDL season going. Oh, I know, man. MW3 is already living up to the hype. Actually more better than I think than MW2 did. In oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Because, you got better movement from what you've seen in the gameplay and all, what, 16 classic MW2 maps are coming. Yeah, I mean, I think they they went all out with it being the 20-year anniversary of the franchise. Uh, and again, bringing back those maps, a lot of them we haven't seen in, like, remasters or anything like that. And, uh, you know, for the old heads, they're going to love the nostalgia. And for a lot of new people, they're, they're going to finally get to see what some good quality maps look like in Call of Duty for the first time in a while. So it's a win-win in my book all around, I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, so speaking of the MW3 season, um, I think it's going to be a great season for competitive, nonetheless, because whenever you have the pros tweeting like this is the the goat of all CODs, you know everyone's hyped and it's going to be – Spectacular for just not them, but for the play or the the spectators, the viewers, because when they're hyped, the fans are hyped, and it's gonna make just for a great season overall. For sure. Um, but for for the CDO twenty twenty four season going in here, I feel like there still could be improvements to be made for this season. Now, last year definitely we got the integration of both Twitch and YouTube being you know co-aired yep. do you think that helped more than anything or do you think there's could be something different no i mean i thought that was a fantastic idea for them i mean i understand that holding a league like this with the call of duty league like they need revenue and i understand the importance of a broadcast deal where i presumably i think youtube is expected to take on exclusivity again for this upcoming season and up front, it seems like a bad thing because it takes away the audience that would be watching on Twitch. Um, and YouTube doesn't quite have the same integrations that Twitch does in terms of having drops and having those rewards that not only have, um, not only reward like fans and people who would be watching the Call of Duty League no matter what, but those are the types of things that draw in people that are just like casual gamers because they can get rewards for their own accounts. Uh, just by watching other people play. Um, but I do understand that, you know, Call of Duty League, they, they need to make money for 
the league itself, for the franchises that are involved. Um, and there's nothing better than an exclusive broadcasting deal. Um, I do hope that YouTube takes some steps forward to improve the viewing experience for um, uh, spectators. And I do want to clarify that it, I don't believe it has officially been announced yet that YouTube will have the exclusivity. It's just been discussed a lot this off season. It seems like that's what we're trending towards. Um, but if it's possible to still keep Twitch on board and, and um, broadcast to all platforms, I mean, you see it with other esports. I know Halo broadcasts to both. Uh, I believe Rocket League broadcasts to both. Apex Legends does. Um, and, and even, for example, the the World Series of Warzone uh, that just played out and was casted from London, uh, it had the highest viewership ever for any Call of Duty event, including Call of Duty World League, Call of Duty League, or anything prior. Um so, you know, having that viewership on Twitch and again, having those rewards for people to watch that are just casual viewers, um, I think is very crucial. And, you know, it, it is a tough decision to take money versus or guaranteed money versus having higher viewership. But I understand that as a business, it, it is something they have to heavily decide upon. Oh, yeah, definitely. For sure. Um, I remember like. I think it was like major two, major three, right in there when they announced that Twitch was also going to be coming back as being you know, like kind of like co aired. I was like, great, this is awesome because now you're essentially doubling your viewership right there. And that's great moving forward. But I'm with you. I believe that it's been more talks of uh, YouTube exclusive, exclusive for uh, the Call of Duty League. Um, now the the format that's been going on here lately, you know, through major one through four and five, do you ever see a possibility of us going back to kind of like the Call of Duty World League kind of format, or do you think this is the kind of format that we're going to see for futures ahead of time? Um, you know, I don't think, at least as long as the Call of Duty League is in place and you have these 12 or, you know, hopefully we do get more franchise teams in the future. Um, I mean, I, I hope that's the goal at least, but um, I personally don't see us going back to the Call of Duty World League uh, style where you have like this giant bracket play and then pool, or, or pool play and then bracket play and, and then actually having the the real tournament because, you know, I, I know that those that 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 style that setup allows for more possible like upsets and surprises, but in the grand scheme of things, it was pretty consistent which teams and players were competing when it mattered most, um, and and I do like the idea of having like a franchise league where you know. Theoretically, it should be the highest level of talent competing. And obviously you have situations where, you know, some people try to say it's a friendship league or some teams just are dead set on being mediocre or being bad and they don't do anything to try and shake the roster up and, and be more competitive. Um, and hopefully that changes. But uh, I don't ever see us going back to having like that massive like um, pool play and stuff like we did once before but what I will say that I hope we do see at least if the league doesn't have any sort of official expansion is I would love to see them recreate what they did at major one in modern warfare 2 in Raleigh where um, they had four teams from challengers that were the top four going into the event they got to compete in pools or in brackets against CDL teams um, and you know ultimately all of those teams ended up being relegated back down into playing in the challengers finals and whatnot for the tournament but I mean you had moments where you know Boston Breach was defeated by uh, Elevate and I want to say another team I want to say the London Royal Ravens lost to either Rocker Academy or LAG Academy or something like that um, and, and in LAG Academy's case, it, it was huge for three of the four players on that team. They got elevated up to the main roster after winning 
the challengers event for major one um and i think it, it allows for it adds more weight for the challenger scene with those elites and just those majors in general if, if they know that playing is more than just money that they could play and have an opportunity to then compete with those teams that are on the cdl level at those majors i think it would put more eyeballs on the challenger scene it would incentivize people to invest more into the challenger scene and, and sponsors to want to obviously get more involved with it um and, and that's the thing with any sport or esport in this case you know obviously you want to have everything in the present be good you want to have the highest level of competition and the highest level of entertainment in the present but you can't uh you can't neglect the future and you really need to invest in you know, those people that are going to be coming up next year or five years from now um, and allowing for them to have a legitimate platform and opportunity to be able to compete and then eventually hopefully get into the main league. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'd love to see them, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be every single major, but I would love to see them incorporate that style into more than just one for this upcoming season. Oh yeah, definitely for sure. And yeah, you touched on like four challengers teams coming into the major one tournament. We could also probably, or the CDO, I I say like we, like I'm a <laughs> stakeholder into it, but um, but maybe like for COD Champs this year, if you're not going to expand until like maybe further seasons, maybe get a sixteen team playoff tournament with four challengers then and just. Who knows? Maybe a uh, challengers team will win COD Champs this coming year. Agreed. I mean, I, I think, you know, the more matches you can have, I mean, because think about it. They had ch uh, COD Champs over the same amount of days that they would have any other major that they have, but you only had eight teams competing, um, which in fairness, I do, n I don't mind the not all 12 CDL teams qualifying if all it's going to be is CDL teams. I think if you're going to go the route that you said, where it's the 12 teams plus the top four challengers teams that then compete for champs, then I would want all 12 CDL teams there. But when it's not, allowing all 12 teams, then there's really nothing you're playing for during the regular season aside from you know placement and, and money um because there's no risk of if we don't play good we're not going to be competing at the biggest event um and i, and I like that for this year because it came it really came down to the wire uh as we all saw with boston breach minnesota rocker seattle surge and uh, um, las paris legion, or las vegas legion that's right they they rebranded too <laughs> um but and that was exciting it made, made major four and major five and and even the online matches held a lot of weight because even 10 CDL points from winning an online match could have made the difference of one of those teams competing versus not. Um, and then obviously major five was a ton of fun because, you know, certain teams were going to need to go on a, a big run to make champs. And, and evidently it didn't happen for Legion, which a lot of people wanted to see. Um, but I, I, you know, there's gotta be stakes involved, but I personally do agree that like the best route to go for allowing the most opportunity for everyone involved is to have the 12 CDL teams and then the top four teams in challengers for the year being in that. And then you could split it into four pool play or groups or whatever. And then, you know, the top two from each of the pool plays advance to the bracket. And, uh, you know, it's more matches it's more time spent for people watching. It's more worth it to go to the event for the people that go. Um, I think it's a win all around. Um, and, you know, again, it just shows an investment into wanting the main product to be solid and exciting, but also giving the, I guess you could say minor league or amateur scene a boost in viewership and just stakes in general for people to want to watch um and you know i i hope to see more of an investment from the league into that because as we have seen over the past two years all those veterans and household names that people have held on to for the last 
10 plus years, Skump, uh, Crim6, Methods, uh, they're, you know, they're moving on. They're retiring. They're uh, moving into other forms of, you know, competing. In Crim 6s case, he's doing like e-racing now. Uh, and then you got Skump and Methods doing content. And thankfully, those are guys are still doing content centered around Call of Duty. And I think that's important to still have those personalities. And, and especially guys like Zuma, shout out to him and the flank and everything they do. Um, but you need to keep developing future and current stars uh, and people that are players that spectators are going to want to latch on to and, and watch. Um, and so that's why I think investing into the amateur scene while continuing to improve the CDL scene is very important. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, that That's a great bit of a details right there that you pointed out. And definitely that's what I believe that the, CDL needs moving forward, and uh, so speaking of moving forward, uh, let's talk about Team Tree Brandon and hurting, hurting or helping the CDL. So we've had a lot of Team Tree Brand over the the past what now three four seasons, and yep. like Chicago Huntsman turn into now Chicago or Optic Chicago, and then Optic Texas, <laughs> Vegas Legion, formerly known as Paris. Now the Royal Ravens, oh, now the Carolina Ravens. Do you think that hurts the CDL, or do you think it helps by bringing in a little bit more viewerships? Because really now, with like the the Ravens and the Legion now moving out of the Europe region, you only got Toronto now. That's a foreign team, right? Um, you know, and I I, uh, I understand why they moved away from having european based teams and i know this might catch a lot of flack might be a hot take or whatever um but considering that most of the matches that lead up to the majors are played online it just didn't feasibly make sense to have a team in london and and usually even though they were based out of london they were competing i think at one point during the cold war season they were competing here in raleigh north carolina for all the online events um the royal ravens were um and then you know paris like like having a team in california compete against a team in london on online servers it just doesn't you know we have excellent technology or whatever but it's not that good um and and then you just have lag and every single match is gonna get like clowned because people are just gonna be like well this team only won because it was on their host or whatever um and so i i know that the EU and like London, like those areas especially have huge viewership and, and people that want to watch and enjoy the Call of Duty scene. And, and you know, people acted upset about the concept of the London Royal Ravens. I would say London more than Paris when they left. People seem to show a lot of negativity and be like, why are we moving a team out of London? There's a lot of fans there and everything. But the fact of the matter is, I, I don't feel like the London Royal Ravens did a whole lot to really connect and, and build upon that city-based franchise. And they didn't really do a whole lot to like, like other than having uh, uh, people from EU and from England or whatever compete on their team, they didn't really do a whole lot to get involved with that an example like the boston breach where they obviously were not one of the original 12 teams they were able to come in at the start of vanguard and you know they've done a really good job with um coordinating with the boston area and they even went and hosted a major last year that was a huge success and, and they've connected with you know local organizations uh local sports franchises i want to say people from like the boston celtics were at the boston breach major um showing support and, and they play out of where the patriots are located actually um it's under the same ownership believe it or not um and i, I think there's been examples of both where there's been teams that rebranded or relocated and they've done it right because you know whether people like it or not at the moment, we are in city-based franchising. And if you don't take advantage of that and try to build up a local 
support base, then all you're going to have is people rooting for Optic and then a few people rooting for the other team that's playing Optic because they don't like Optic. Uh, whereas, you know, there are Boston Breach fans now. There are um, – I'm trying to think of another good team. Minnesota, they do a good job building up their fan base. Toronto really did a good job, especially this past year, building up their fan base um, and capitalizing on the excitement of a guy like Scrap. Um, and, and so I'm hoping Carolina, or you know, formerly London, now Carolina, goes a different route with their approach. I hope that they truly try to build upon this region and – build up the fan base and stuff because you know North Carolina has been doing a lot to get more involved in esports in general they've hosted uh, a lot of esports majors over the past two years Halo Call of Duty um, I want to say they hosted Rainbow Six event not too long ago I mean they're incentivizing uh, producers and gaming companies to hold events in the state they want they know that there's a demand for esports they want to host those events so I'm hoping that Carolina, now that they've rebranded, will go about that and try to build up a local fan base. But, um, I mean, I think there are examples of it, like you said. It, it's gone both ways. Uh, having Chicago Huntsman slash Optic Chicago, that was a big deal because, I mean, everyone knows that's where Optics, you know, that's where they originated. Yeah. Um, and and I would say the Dallas Empire, you know, they won the very first – COD cha- or CDL champs, they had good branding and and it seemed like they had a strong fan base. And then you know the merger happened. You now have Optic Texas. Obviously, there's still a ton of Optic fans. There always will be, but you lost the fans that were Dallas Empire fans, and they had to figure out who they were going to root for. And um, you you can't be moving around every single year. We can't keep having rebrands and relocations and stuff like that because how is anyone ever going to get attached if you just keep changing it after a year um but like i said i I think it's a case-by-case basis of certain teams have gone about it and done it right and then certain situations it's been unfortunate um and it's up to each team to really make it a good thing or make it a bad thing yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, like I remember, like with the Paris Legion, for example, during the Modern Warfare, like 2019 Modern Warfare and Cold War season, their social media presence was unknown. Like, never tweeted unless it was unless it was match day. But other than that, there was no like community interactions like you would see in Toronto, yep. in Atlanta, because Atlanta phase specifically. They do a really good job of like capturing like the Atlanta atmosphere of like the hip hop culture and mm-hmm. kind of like restaurants that's like famous in the Atlanta area. So that's definitely good right there. And you need that if you're gonna rebuild and hopefully the Carolina Ravens will uh do that this season. Um so the last topic I do want to touch on is the top four teams for this hmm. season. So I got got my list right here. I want to see if you agree with me. So right. uh, coming in at number one is obviously Atlanta Faze. You know, you just signed in the villain himself, Draza, <laughs> to this roster. Um, number two would be off to Texas with Pred, Kenny, Dashy, and uh, Shotzi. And then uh, this is actually your tweet right here for the Toronto Ultra, Scrappy, Insight, Kleenex and Envoy for the Toronto Ultra. And then finally, from at CDL News 24 7, the New York Subliners, Hydra, Kismet, Caesar Skies, and Sib. What do you think of this? Um, I mean, I definitely agree with, you know, I think there's five teams that you could maybe have up there within the top four. Uh, that, you know, the fourth and fifth could be interchangeable. I feel pretty confident in the fact that Atlanta, at least going into the season, is number one. Um, they, those three that have teamed together every year in the CDL, uh, Celium, Simp, and Abizi, have just been, they, they have set the bar for what success looks like and consistency. Um, even the year in Vanguard where that team didn't win a major, they were still getting second at like every single event, which is a lot better than 
a lot of other teams were doing. So, I mean, and the addition of Draza, um, I, I think that was a solid choice. I wasn't necessarily like fully on board with the idea of them getting rid of Slasher. I feel like he was scapegoated a lot this year. And so probably more than anything, he's not too mad about being, you know, moving on because uh, it's probably better for his mental. Uh, but obviously going and getting Draza, and not only that, but you kept Draza away from Optic, which is the other team that he was discussed as going to. Gorgeous. So you had an addition and a subtraction to your, or addition to yourself and a subtraction from your opponent all at the same time with that move. Um, I, I think they're definitely the team to beat going into this season, even though, yes, they didn't, you know, they didn't win CDL champs this past year. Um, I think I would be more comfortable putting NYSL at number two over Optic. And I know that sounds maybe crazy, especially since they made a roster move that people aren't accustomed to seeing. When when a team wins champs, we usually don't see a roster change, at least immediately before the start of the next season. Um, but they ended up deciding to move on from Priesta, go in and get Sib, who obviously has a ton of potential to be a star in this league, uh, showed out in his first two seasons with the Seattle Surge. I mean, him and Pred and just the organization in general uh, from Vanguard and MW2, it was like night and day compared to how the Seattle Surge were in MW19 and, and Cold War. So uh, I think that was a, a good move for them. Um, and it's all going to come down to chemistry and whether, you know, certain, because pr- what I will say about Priesta from NYSL is he was a player that stats didn't matter and he was willing to play the objective and, and, you know, fill the gaps and whatnot. And Sib definitely is going to be more of like a star power kind of player, higher potential. Um, So I think they're going to have to, I think Kismet does a good job of filling the gaps too. I think it's more going to come down to which AR is going to be more willing to be the dirty work player because they both have great potential, Skies and Sib. Um, and then I would put um, I'd put Optic at number three. Uh, you know, it was questionable at first. The decision, uh, Pred obviously made sense. That's been known for, I mean, since like January of last year that they tried to get him. It fell through. But we all knew once the off season came around, that's where he was going to end up. Um and we all know how solid of a player he is. And personally, I think he's a fantastic duo along with Shotzi on the SMG. Because we all know Shotzi is the type of player that he's at his best when he's flying around the map and he's you know, faking out the other team and just has them on their toes at all times. Whereas Pred, you know, he can be aggressive like that, but he also can be very effective as an SMG playing a bit slower and more methodical and holding lanes and stuff like that. And so I, I think the two of them are going to end up having really good chemistry. Um, and then the addition of Kenny at first, I was a bit skeptical because he has been playing the SMG role um, the past two years. And I mean, they won chance when he was on the SMG role, uh, but he's said it many times. He prefers to play the flex role and and I think one thing that Optic was lacking last year was every other team, I feel like if you looked at them, you know, their flex player truly embodied the flex in the sense that depending on the situation, they were pulling out the SMG versus the AR. And Optic didn't really do that. Dashy was always staying on the AR and, and Ghosty, unless he like picked up an SMG, I feel like he was also always staying on the AR. Um, whereas I feel like Kenny, you know he can perform with both weapons and I think he also is very smart when it comes to knowing the situation and what it calls for and also I think he just brings an element of leadership and experience in terms of competing at a high level and winning Uh, I mean he has been one of the most successful players since Black Ops 4 and so or even you could go as far back as World War 2 I mean he had he got second that year um I think overall they've got a really good team. It'll be a full off season and year of karma and JP 
coaching together. It's not bringing him in, you know, midpoint through the year uh, or towards the end, rather. Uh, I, I feel confident that that team is going to be consistent, which is very out of the ordinary for an optic team. Usually they're up and then they're down. Um, I think they're going to find a, a level of consistency this year and get third. And then uh, Toronto, I mean, it's almost like putting like three, like third place A and third place B rather than three and four. I, you know, I'm a big proponent for Hixie kind of got screwed because again, he was the objective guy, the glue guy, not the stats guy. And so it's easy to be like, they got uh, a great fit on that team. Uh, and then of course you kept um, Scrap and Insight together, which there was concern over that. There was concern over losing Kleenex um, as well, but you didn't. And so adding Envoy to the mix, I think was a definite upgrade over Hixie overall. Um, because Envoy, I, de- I think, is one of those players that can really be the route guy on SMG, whereas Kleenex can be more, like more of the slayer, if you will. Um, and so I-, I think that Toronto is going to continue to build upon the star power and slaying ability of Scrap. Uh, and again, I- just another team that over the past couple of years has shown insane levels of consistency um and yeah i mean i think those four teams make up your top four for right now um you know some of the other rosters i think boston breach have a very interesting and potentially exciting roster for this upcoming season um you know obviously they added priesta they added slasher and then they brought capsule back and they're sticking it out with snoopy who had a very good run at champs for that being his first action in the CDO. Um, I think that's like a team to look out for, if you will. Um, and then, you know, hopefully we can get these last three rosters. You know, Seattle still needs to finalize. We, we were, we've been told the rumored roster. Um, they haven't finalized it. And then Carolina, um, Vegas, and LAG all need to get their rosters locked in because we still have no idea what they're going to be doing. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was just fixing to point that out that we're still four teams away from finally getting roster locks. Uh, yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting. And going into the season, I really hope that Vegas can bounce back because I mean, I know their, their entire roster outside of a uh, temp was released, right? Or the whole roster. Everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh and see I'm a big proponent of at least trying to keep Clayster on that roster because Clayster definitely revamped that entire franchise. Uh looking at it as like, you know, he's the veteran, you know, we gotta not particularly like just do everything that he says, but just kinda like follow his guidance and he's gonna lead us to success. And that's what happened this past season with uh with Clayster being part of that Vegas Legion. So but hey, I'm not the one oh, making agreed. these cutting decisions. <laughs> uh so yeah, so I, I think we're <laughs> right. pretty, I think we're pretty much set on the uh top four teams so far. And um and really next we go throughout this week, uh which this yep. week's already passed by the time you're hearing this podcast and then uh next uh thursday is cod next when we get the mw3 reveal trailer for multiplayer and yes. so and then that's kicks off the uh the beta as well that friday and uh so hopefully we can get a little bit of information on competitive but if not i could really see that being like a kind of like a two weeks after launch kind of update for the competitive scene I definitely would like them to go a similar route they did this previous season uh, where I don't think they necessarily announced anything specific about competitive at COD next, but it wasn't long after and it was well before the game finally released that like we got the reveal of where some of those majors were going to be taking place and and just an idea of what the season was going to look like and when it was going to start. 
I definitely think they should do that again. Like, I don't want it to just feel random. Like, the game's out, and we're still like, so uh, when's ranked play coming out? When's the season starting? Like, all these questions. Like, I'm hoping that they continue to have that um, clarity on that. And, you know, we've been waiting a long time. It's been the longest off season, which is a whole other thing we could discuss of how I think it was way too long of an off season, but. I'll leave it at that, but the, you know, I'm excited for the 2024 season to finally get started. Oh yeah, for sure. So, but yeah, man. So th- this was been honestly a great discussion right here. Uh, definitely informative and um, you know entertaining. Uh, so, where can uh, my fans find you at? Uh, I know we'll, I know we'll have your Twitter link below in the description. But mm-hmm. any upcoming projects you got working on with GG Breaking Point or for yourself? Uh, I mean, nothing specific, you know, just we're still waiting and, and hopefully going to get more information on those rosters and hopefully we can put some stuff out about that. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, articles and, and content with Breaking Point will become much more uh, consistent once the season is, you know, approaching and, and once we're in season. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than my BP underscore Drew, um, Twitter, that's or X, whatever you want to call it. That's where you can find me. Um, I'll be active on there, leading up to everything. And uh, you know, I'd like to get some YouTube content going too here and there. Uh, I've been kind of inconsistent with that, but that would be at Piscaro DB on YouTube. Uh, but other than that, man, uh, just excited. Yeah, man, for sure, definitely. And uh, of course, we'll have that YouTube, and uh, my fans will definitely check you out. And uh, when you get that content rolling, they'll be sure to hit that like and subscribe button more and more. Uh, But yeah, man, so Drew, it's been an honor to have you on the show right here. I don't really have much guests for Call of Duty League, so this is um, a a once-in-a-lifetime right now for me, and hopefully we can do more collabs in the future. Absolutely. I'm always down to talk. Uh, Call of Duty, Call of Duty League. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, man. But uh, but guys, check out Drew's Twitter, and of course, I'll have the YouTube link as well in the description. And uh, yeah, so hope y'all enjoyed the Call of Duty League content. If you did, make sure to like button here on YouTube, follow on uh, Spotify, leave a five star rating. It sure is appreciative. And I, come Morgan and Drew, will catch you guys later. Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to this Belly Up Sports Podcast Network product. Some said we go belly up, so we made it our name, and we're still here.